At just 22 years old, Yossi Ginsberg set out on an adventure in the Amazon. But his dream journey quickly turned into a nightmare when Yossi was separated from his crew and spent 20 long days lost in the jungle with no food, water, knives or any survival skills. Up until now there was a fire, now no fire and I'm all alone and every shadow outside was menacing. I knew I lost everything and everybody. I was in hysteria. 36 years later, his incredible story of survival is still inspiring audiences right around the world and it's now taking on a new life in a feature film starring Harry Potter's Daniel Radcliffe and Yossi Ginsberg joins us live at the desk. Yossi, great to speak to you. This is an incredible story. You were just 22, out of national service. What were the emotions like in the, in the jungle when you were lost? Initially, it was uh, a breakdown. You know, I, uh, I lost all my friends, I lost all my equipment. And that's when I realized that my lifelong dream has turned a nightmare. Yeah. Rainy season, no fire, no gun. Uh, I was sure I'm going to die miserable deaths, uh, you know, by beast or by whatever elements. But then it turned actually to be an amazing story of self-discovery because when you, there's nobody to lean on, you finally discover that you can lean on yourself. And when there's no choice, and we're talking life and death, you know, suddenly you become the hero that you always wanted to be because the circumstances are as such that you have to rise to the challenge. And you do rise to the challenge because when it's life or death, you fight for your life. So actually it was a tremendous self-discovery for me that I actually can deal with the circumstances. And I tell you in a strange way, I never felt so much at home as much as I felt in that jungle, lost and alone. Wow. That was very, very powerful because discovering your own power is intoxicating. Mm. Mm. It would have been incredibly harrowing at times though. What do you think uh, was the hardest part? Was it the injuries? You suffered some pretty significant injuries to yeah. your feet. Yeah. No, look, the injury is part of it. It's uh, actually there was so much injury. Yeah, it's it's hard to describe because uh, three weeks. First of all, wet day and night. So each injury doesn't heal, you know, because mm. it's wet all the time. My feet weren't feet anymore. It was chunks of blood and pus. And uh, but when you go through so much pain, something like a miracle happens because the pain remains as a sensation, but the victimhood of the pain disappears because you cannot afford to be victim. You know, you mm. have to endure the pain. Mm. And there's some magic there because the pain, without the misery of like feeling sorry for yourself, actually it's a you know, you have to transcend that, and, 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 and I did. But I think the hardest thing for me was the solitude. You know, I realized that more than anything, what I'm lacking, what I'm missing is actually human companionship. That was the hardest thing, it was just to deal with it alone. So tell us about how you were saved and the people that saved your life and now how you are giving back. Yeah, that's actually what made my story amazing is that I was searching for a tribe but in the end, the tribe found me, you know. <laughs> they found my friend, they saved his life, and together with my friends, they came back to save me. So the local indigenous people of this forest saved my life. Ten years later, I joined them, moved into the Amazon again, but not as a young traveler, but actually moved as an adult and made it my life. I lived in the village for three years, was initiated as one of them. I'm an Uchupiamona today, <laughs> like one of the tribe. And I built a resort together with the tribe that completely transformed the entire region because the region was all about exploitation, hunting, and, mm -hmm. and now it's all about hospitality, ecotourism that makes more money than the exploitation and still preserve the forest at the same time, allow these people also to take pride of their culture. It's like a story of a miracle, that resort that we built so, so remote away from civilization and, it, and it's still operating until today. That's great. It's such a, a wonderful place to visit. Uh, Yossi, I uh, spent some time in the Ecuadorian part of the Amazon. Your experience was in the Bolivian That's right. part. Now it's being made into a feature film. Yeah. Uh, you must be very excited about that. Yeah. What's it been like on the set? Was, I mean, first of all, I was honoured that I was invited to the set. Um, I was out of three months of shooting, six weeks I actually spent on the set, both in Colombia and in Australia. Uh, I got to meet uh, Daniel and the rest of the actors, became really good friends. And 
It's very, very, I mean, it's moving, uh, not necessarily because I went through it, just to see my life story actually captured in, in such a big way. So I'm really privileged and um, I'm looking forward to the opening. It's in Melbourne in August in the Melbourne Film Festival. Wonderful, can't wait. It sounds like a fantastic film to see and a remarkable story. Really good to speak to you. Thanks so much, Thank Yossi. you. Thank Thanks, you so Yossi. much. And if you would like to hear more about Yossi's incredible tale, you can pick up a copy of his book, Jungle, or stay tuned for the film out in August.